What's up everybody, Shirei here, hope you guys are safe during this COVID-19 period. Apparently I have a lockdown in my country, so I have been like working from home for like about a month now. So that's the reason why I have time to play Powerful Exile, but I started off late. I never thought of like doing a build guy in this league, but because I just play casually and I didn't expect much from this league. Someone asked about it, so yeah, I'm not sure what to play, but end up playing Burning Arrow and plus a new helmet from Delirium. This is the new helm that just introduced in this league, Exilium. So, which is kind of strong in a way that this helm offers you a new skill, which is a level 20 snipe skill, and it does provide you 6 stages of uh, charging. It's a channeling skill, of course, and how you're gonna use it, which is to just throw any arrow skills, bow skill into the helm, and then you will just snipe it. And you try to multiply the damage over there, and you got 6 stages, and you got a serious damage over there, man. It's like 1 chaos, you can get around 6 link damage, which is 1 mil plus. Yeah, roughly depends on what kind of build you're gonna do with it. Apparently, there's a downside for this helm, so yeah. Yeah, hey, we are back with a new build in this league. Yeah, apparently I thought of like playing casually and I didn't expect I would create a build out of this. But in this league, it's kind of special because we got new custom jewels for our extendants, which is our strong point. So, you know to play a lot of uh, jewels, you need to have a lot of skill points and coincidence that ascendants are good with skill points, man. So, this is her. Yeah, apparently I didn't come up with any fancy names this league. So, yeah, she's just bored as shit. Yeah, same goes to me. I'm bored as shit as well in this league because we are having a lockdown due to COVID-19. I never expect I'll play Burning Arrow this league. I'll just pick up this arrow by random and then I started out playing Vow Arrow and some stuff. So let's jump right into the skill gems right now. Okay, first of all, Vow Burning Arrow will be socketed right here and then will be supported by Awakening Burning Damage Support. This is kind of cheap in a way. Get this as soon as possible if you can. Yep. The following jewel will be like Amulet. So this will be our main source of uh, flat fire damage against burning enemies. So yeah, we have actually have 170% chance to ignite. So if you can't cap your chance to ignite during leveling, you can use Combustion to help up your chance to ignite. It'll be very great. Definitely you can cap that ready because with this bow, you will get 10% chance to ignite along with all the skill tree support that you're gonna get later on will definitely cap your chance to ignite to 100% so you don't have to worry about that just use this uh, because you need to have a lot of flat fire damage to multiply later on and then awakening deadly ailment support and this one is definitely is, is a need because of the awakening it does have damage ailments inflicted with supported gems deal damage faster so this is the thing that we need right here so if you can't get this that's okay you can use the one that uh, without awakening on first and then later on we get this because this one is kind of costly i think i bought this about 70 chaos and then gmp yes we just need this for clearing definitely yes and because of the four additional projectiles and a bit of attack speed right there mm -hmm. so later on if you don't want to use xlm so you can actually swap this GMP out and replace by Swift Affliction and you got your so-called 7th Link. And the last one is Elemental Damage Attacks with Support. So yeah, if you can get an Awakening on, which is great, but that one I couldn't get it until right now because it's kind of expensive and that's okay for that one. So it's not in a rush for this one, but definitely you need the Awakening Deadly Element Support and the Awakening Burning Damage Support. And yes, Axelium, yes, this will be the new Axelium helmet right here and it actually grants level 20 snipe skills if you are wearing this helmet and how to trigger that skill you have to socket any bow skills into this helmet and then it will trigger whatever bow skill that's inside there along with the supported jewels right here and this one is a normal burning arrow as usual because i need the quality level 20 and then i need to corrupt it to hopefully can get to level 21 to get more higher damage i don't need another additional vow burning arrow so only vow burning arrow is needed for clearing and then this one will be my mint focus on single target bosses so this is why this is a normal burning arrow so that i can get to level 21 and then followed by elemental damage with support yes definitely <laughs> if you can get awakening up which is great but yeah it's actually a downside you need to get a double of that so it's a double investment in a way so okay daily element support yes if you have the currency to spend again you need to spend one more for this onto this helmet so they can get more damage for single target bosses and that's fine I'm gonna use this for temporary. Yeah, if I got a couple more currencies to spend, I'll buy this one as well, the Awakening version one, and followed by Awakening Burning Damage Support. Yes, definitely can get this. It's so cheap. So yeah, and let's go to the secondary skill for now, which is Wave of Commission along with a uh, Spell Totem and then Combustion 
multiple totem support and calling strike yes we are using totem for this one and yeah thanks to our accidency later on and it does keep the boss busy while i'm charging all of my snipe skills basically this is a support totem i don't expect them to deal a lot of damage which is uh that's the reason why i just use free for commission along with combustion this is to reduce the fire resistance of the mobs and whatever the bosses and stuff and culling strike and let's move on to the glove side so yeah upper storm so basically nothing yes i will this upper storm link with second wind support and then steel skin and dash so dash is our main primary movement skill in this build so yeah we'll be dashing quite often and then we'll be like using this flash running around and then kill mobs and stuff basically it's like drive through and shit so we are playing ignite build so we just run around and just shoot fire arrows and we just keep running around never stop and yeah that's why and this will keep us alive most of the time yeah but thanks to second wind support we got two charges of that so whenever i dash once there's another charge already already do not spam too much because you need to time it nicely and if you test spam too much sometimes you can't dash quite often because you there's a cooldown of it and steel skin this is one of the guard skills they're gonna use in this build to keep me alive yeah it does help me tank a lot of shits and whenever i dive through a lot of a big mouth and stuff before i leash them i will need to tank some of the hits first so this help me quite often yeah when i'm taking big hits and stuff so mm -hmm, you must use this mm -hmm. nothing much on all of storm basically i just use this skill to trigger my elemental overload and let's get to the aura side man skitter boss yes we need this skitter boss because of their shock which allows you to do more damage to your enemies so mm -hmm. and followed by malevolence yes it just give you more damage over time multiplier on this one and skill effect duration so yeah i choose this one over anger because i already got flat fire damage from amulet so i don't need more flat fire damage from anger so this one will be a lot better in all well-rounded you can actually ditch her of ash if you want to because i got a uh, last minute changes of my build after i defeated cyrus i actually got a jewel from him which is called trade of hope yeah it does give me some of the skill points that I can jump around here i don't need to allocate any connected skill points to the skill nodes right here yeah that's the reason why i pick up this to reduce most of the mana reserve here and then along with enlightened support i can use heroic ash and the last gem is portal yeah nothing much just to cast portal back to the town and shit yeah okay <laughs> okay let's move on to the recruitments right here this bow is a must for this build so yeah you actually try out some of the bows out there apparently this one is a good spot for me because it does provide the level 20 in that proliferation on the second gems right here basically you have a seven link right here if you choose not to use a uh, snipe yeah you actually actually just swap the gmp away and then you just put in swift affliction for the seven link single targeting boss skill yeah but i choose to use a uh, snipe skill instead so i don't need to have uh, my swift affliction socketed into this gem i just put on my gmp right here and i don't need to do any gem swapping right there and let's get to the main helmet right here Asselium. yes it does grant you level 20 snipe skill and then give you some uh, aggressive rating and evasion rating that's a bit of buff right there and that's okay and it does provide you a bit of a uh, defensive mods right there which is the dodge attack and spell hits while channeling which is kind of good as well and the snipe skills come with six stages so basically you get 120 percent more damage with elements per stage and 160 percent more damage with hits per stage so imagine that you got six stages up and then you can multiply by six which is kind of a lot several hundred and twenty fuck my math is kind of fail so you calculate that by yourself it's kind of like you basically just take this burning arrow damage which, which is my this one this is my burning arrow skill you got 130k per maximum damage right here just multiply by 720 and it is kind of high for a single target boss i just spent one chaos on this helmet so yeah okay for the downside for this skill it does kind of ridiculous that it blocks some of the skill when you are charging yeah so you have to play it very situational yeah you can't use this quite often when you are dealing bosses if you found that the boss is constantly moving around throwing shit at you right you definitely need to get a shit out of there you, do, you can't stand skill definitely you will die so that's the downside of it you need to constantly keep moving and you can only use this skill while the boss is busy with something else that's the reason why i need my totem right here it does help me to keep the boss a bit busy so i can just charge to stage six and i just fire my burning arrow to him and at some time i found that this type is not so reliable so if you ask me if i were gonna use this in the future 
Mm, definitely no. Yeah, because it's kind of like uh, you know over precision that you got so high damage. Of course, that you need to have a downside of it. If not, it'll be very imbalanced right here. In most cases, I try to charge up my skill, and definitely there's some mobs getting in my way, and I couldn't hit the boss with this skill. It's kind of weird in a way. Sometimes I couldn't hit the boss with this snipe skill, even though I charge on maximum stage and right in front of his face. Um, it's just kind of inconsistent. That's the reason why I don't recommend this helmet in the future unless the gg will fix something about it yeah but that's okay for now but yeah if you don't really want to wear this helmet that's okay you can swap to any rare helmet that give life and a bit of resistance and some stuff as for the helmet chan i think it's better for you to get a burning arrow that increases your debuff effect or the one that burning arrow physical damage gain as extra damage so let's move on to the other equipments right here, which is the cure. Yes, you will see a lot of hunter equipments in my equipment right here because we actually need the fire damage over time multiplier. We got all our flat fire damage from Imolade and the bow itself and some other areas and it's from the skill tree and stuff. So we actually need fire damage multiplier for this one. So try to get fire damage over time multiplier on all your rare equipments if it's possible. If can't, you can just get the flat fire damage or the increased elemental damage with attack skill. And followed by yes we need life as well flat life definitely we need that because we need to have <laughs> survivability right there okay let's move on to the necklace right here yes here i couldn't get the fire damage multiplier that's okay i'll just get the flat fire damage from this one and then resistance as well and coincidence as i got fire damage leash as life as a mod and the best annoying skill is the lava slash so that's the best dps node out there so try to get that even though it does require you to get a golden oil for that if you can't get lava slash you can actually get this one instead arconis which is kind of cheap yeah you can just use two green oil and one blue oil you can get this as well so you can use this for time being while you're leveling and stuff and as for the rings basically yes more life more resistance and stuff cap your resistance and then if you have additional mods right you can actually get some uh, supporting mods which is a non-challenging skill have minus eight total mana cost i need that because i need to have uh, more mana to spam my burning arrow as for the next ring basically this one is an attacking ring so yeah as usual life and then elemental resistance and curse on enemy hits with flammability on hit yeah basically just for quality of life here so yeah and yep i can't get uh, fire damage over time multiplier so i get the flat fire damage to attacks instead if you struggle with mana again you can actually get the enchant to get uh, the non channeling skill which is the minus uh, total mana cost right here as for the gloves this one yes i need the fire damage time multiplier is very easy to get and get flat fire damage if it's possible if can't you can get attack speed or any of the resistance right there because this is a glove it's easy to get defensive mods than attacking mods so yeah and this belt is a must for this build because of the ignite inflict we attack deal 35 percent faster yeah that's the only mod that we actually need and fortunately we got some resistance from this belt as well and same goes to the life right there and the last one is the hunter boots right here you get the resistance right there movement speed to 30 percent and then the thing that we need right here is to inflict you deal damage 10 percent faster you can actually get a rare armor with a lot of life and resistance out there this is not a mandatory because i found this armor by random and i found that uh, the movement speed is kind of important to me so that's the reason why i use this and plus the maximum life is kind of high which is kind of near to 200 right now surprisingly i got a lot of tier 1 resistance from all the gears which is my amulet my boots and my glove as well so as you can see right here my fire resistance without this armor is 195 which is seriously it's kind of high so yeah i just use this for time being feel free to switch to other armor if you want to have more resistance and a bit of flash uh, effects you can actually use belly of the beast so let's move on to the flash yes you need this definitely this is very good for ignite build so yeah no choice you have to get this this is the best one out there for now and followed by quas flash you get the freeze immunity and then the ignite immunity from the speed knight flash and as for the fort flask right here it's kind of optional to you guys uh, i kind of like this because it does create a consecrated ground on the so that i can get some regen out of there and it does help the charges for all my flasks right here you can actually use um bustle flask if you want to get more physical damage reduction from there yeah basically survivability is a king so yeah i kind of like this doesn't matter it's either either way it works so it's up to you and the basic healing flask yes instant recovery and then immune to bleeding I actually have a jewel that immune to corruption blood. I can change this if I want to, but I just leave it here for now. So, mm -hmm. 
As for Pantheon, yes, I'm using Sword of the Brian King to avoid all the chain stun right there. Yeah, I'm relying on my max life and my movement skill to dodge mo most of the hits out there. So if I got stunned by the mobs constantly, I couldn't survive that all the big hits out there. So you have to keep moving in order to avoid all the shits out there. And yeah. As for the minor god, I'm using Soul of Garu Khan. It, it does give me a chance to evade more attacks if I take a savage hit recently. And the most importantly, I will get 6% movement speed if I haven't been hit. So that's the reason why I need that. I need a lot of movement speed for clear speed. So basically, I need to move a lot faster. This is a drive-by build. So you need to run around and just ignite everything around and then they will die easily. You don't have to stand there anymore. So movement speed is a key right here. So if you can get a lot of movement speed, keep running around, keep igniting shits around and that is Good enough. I actually uses this so you go uh, before this just to clear up the simulacrum um, by using this one. Yeah, I will show later on in the future. The downside of this build, we actually can get one shot from the mobs or the boss itself. So we have to rely on our life pool and our defensive guard right here, steel skin. Steel skin is kind of important. You have to use that. The second thing we can't do, which is the mod that have 70% uh, of avoid uh, elemental elements. So because we are killing monster based on our ignites. And here's our skill tree. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's kind of ridiculous that we have so much of jewels right here. This is the first build that I made that I think it's more than 10 jewels that I use this right here. It's kind of ridiculous, but that's okay. Don't freak out yet because the jewels for Ignite build is kind of cheap in this league um, because most of the people out there is playing all the meta builds out there. So mm -hmm. I will leave the power building links at the description down below. Feel free to check it out. And before that, right, before we get to power for building, we need to show you guys this actual tree first because I tested out in power for building. There's some issue with this jewel right here. In power for building, it does not recognize this jewel. It doesn't work as intended to be. So, so feel free to pause the video right here to check on the skill tree. We will start our skill tree by going upwards to the switch area right here because we get most of our damage on top of right here. We get some of the life and some of the nodes that we needed right here as well. Some life as well. So, mm -hmm. and you can get some life here as along the way when you are heading upwards to the witch area. You don't have to take this uh, jewel socket at early stage because you don't have the currency to spend plus and you need to save out some of the currency to buy this one first because you need to get this one as soon as possible to get your damage a lot higher these are the kind of like a late game kind of jewels i will show you guys in a bit one by one on, on all the jewels i think here should be like there's a 10 jewel right here so yeah so you get all the way to the which i which side area get this node get the break of frames and get some life and then head down to a uh, downside right here get the life as well get this holy fire and then get all the way down here get this life as well and get this one as well you don't have to get the aura one this one because you require this jewel right here you do, if you don't have this jewel you don't you do, it's not necessary to get this one because you are not using hero of ash at the early stage and plus you might not have enlightened too so mm -hmm. you can ditch this one basically these are the end game notes that you need to take but not in the early stage so mm -hmm. once you are done with the witch area and the templar area so it's time to head downwards to get this one burning brutality while you're at it you get more life here as well and then you try to get up here get more life as well we need life to survivability on during the early stage and then ignore the bottom area if you have mana issue please get this as much uh, as fast as possible because you need the mana list right here one point will be sufficient enough and head to the top and get acrobatics and then face acrobatics as well this area you just leave it for now if you have the currency to spend then only at that if not you just leave it uh, for time being and then you connect towards the ranger side of the tree and by the time you're done with all these nodes right you are probably you have this um, path of the ranger already and then you can start to respect all the connected nodes from your science tree right here then you respect all the skill nodes right here you can spend on your additional skill notes right here on your jewel side of it mm -hmm. and the first accident that we're going to get which is the dead eye it does give you a global increase rating by 50 percent and then it does give you projectile pierce two additional targets that's the quality of life there and the most importantly the skill fire and additional projectile which is kind of benefit to us for our clearing and even for single target bosses yes and as for these two mods right here is just a bonus to us moving while bleeding doesn't cause you extra damage yes which is kind of quality of life but it's not an important thing that we want and the other one is projectile gain damage as they travel farther and the second one the secondary ascendancy which is the chieftain yes 
I tried Elementis before this and it does not benefit me a lot than the Chieftain right here because Chieftain it does give you increased 40% fire damage which is a lot of fire damage right there and followed by regeneration by 2% and the 1% damage dealt by your totems is leashed to you as life and followed by the most important mod right here which is the 20% chance to cover rare or unique enemies in Ash for 10% on hit it does apply a debuff on the mobs which is 30% uh, movement speed lesser and increased 20% of fire damage taken and that one is very beneficial for us and 10% of increased strength that doesn't matter a lot to us but yeah at least it's a bonus to us to get more life <laughs> so yeah so let's get to the jewels man so yeah this is the first jewel that you actually need to kickstart the entire build some skill notes from the jewels are kind of ridiculously strong that is a lot better than your current skill tree right here you have to have at least one custom jewel in your single tree the one I have right here is actually okay, it's not super crazy right here even though I have a lot of uh, jewels right here but they are kind of cheap in a way, I will show you that later on so first thing first, you need to get the last custom jewel to branch the entire skill notes up here so basically get the notes that you actually need from the last jewel there's a lot of variation in terms of like, skill notes and stuff so do your research online 10% to blind enemies nearby when you use the elemental skill which is our burning arrow so this is kind of important because even though it's 10% but most of the time you realize that the mobs the enemies around you is all blind and once the mobs are blind right they got like 50% to reduce the hit rate of it which is kind of important for our survivability right there so my advice to get this one as for the other two this one is not and so it's not so ideal for it it's just a pure main damage uh, mods right there the 8% of fire damage over time multiplier that's the reason why I want that and increased area effect is not much of deal to us because our burning arrow it does not have any AOE <laughs> as for the cremator I actually get this because I thought of like ignite enemies you hit are destroyed on kill unfortunately this doesn't save me I actually wanted this just to get rid of the porcupines but most of the time the porcupines just die without exploding not sure why because it's like a corpse explosion kind of thing right if you got this mod when they die they will release the spikes that kills me quite often so this is the thing I get this but apparently this is kind of useless so I advise is not to get this if you want you can change this cremator to some other things that you want and let's go to our main damage deal right here so medium custard jewel yes so once you got your big custard jewel right here you can actually expand out for um, using your medium custard jewel and the two recommended uh, note from this um, medium jewel you need to get cook alive and blowback yes the reason why you get blowback definitely you just want to ignite to deal damage faster which is can dps a lot higher and then cook alive not the chance to ignite but the ignite enemies you will have 10% reduced fire resistance which is a damage increase right there so this is the most highest damage node that I got in the entire tree this is kind of costly in a way the most expensive jewel that I bought yeah and I got to around 70 chaos and the last one I got right here which is this one yeah I got this for like 50 chaos not sure why yeah but it's not expensive as the other one so yeah as for the remaining jewels right here typical normal jewels rare jewels you can get maximum of life you need more life and then you get uh fire damage over time multiplier if you only get these two mods right it's kind of cheap you can actually get like a three to five chaos and get the the jewels of this already if you're a bit greedy so you want to get uh, burning damage like 70 percent burning damage or higher or fire damage then you might need to pay up like a uh, 10 chaos to 20 chaos I believe that I got this one around 20 to 30 chaos and then this one yeah this one is just kind of cheap oh you need this because of the Cyrus fights so if you are not going for a Cyrus uh, fight right you don't need this because you I only need this because of the corrupted blood that cannot inflict on me so yeah this is important I actually bought this for like again 30 chaos to 20 chaos not much a big deal so it's kind of affordable during late game and let's get to the other jewels right i believe i have one here. yes there's one here this one is kind of costly i think i bought around 50 chaos i believe yeah because they have four mods that have a uh, damage mods right there so it's kind of costly things that have a uh, fire damage over time multiplier with life and burning damage is kind of um the price is kind of varied but you can get the cheap ones do not rush this i wise to wait a bit I actually bought most of my rare jewels around 20 to 30 chaos the most expensive rare jewel I bought is 50 chaos 
and the reason why I bought that because I have so much of currencies to spare I already got most of my equipments already and I do need the currency so I just bought it for the sake of this video so yeah the next one is this one and again damage multiplier life and some stuff if you can get something that uh, benefit you on your build which is good go here and then more jewel here more jewels will get give you a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of you can get life and damage at the same time on one single uh, jewel socket which is kind of good and this is one of the good examples that I have right here I actually got this for like around less than 10 chaos I think this one is around 5 chaos or something yeah the price is kind of very some are ridiculous high for some reason not sure why I'll tell you this is a it's not an ignite leak so most of people do not play ignite so most of the fire ignite um, equipments and jewels are it's kind of cheap right now so not sure what's the next leak so you might, you might want to take some of the inspiration from here and make it into a better better build as for the last jewel right here which is this unique jewel i actually didn't plan this at all i never expect i would use this i actually got this jewel by random from the cyrus uh fight that i got earlier at the end game so once i fought him and he dropped this to me i was like okay and it seems like it does better benefit me in terms of like save me quite a lot of skill points see right i don't need to connect to here to get the skill points right here as long as the ring that touches the skill nodes right here you can actually jump into that so that's the reason i saved quite a lot of skill points by not going down from this path and i got some skill points to spare to add this one and then here to reduce the mana cost of stuff and here as well life and reduce mana cost so which is kind of good so i think that's about it for all my skill notes oh before that reminder there will be a slight difference on pob link because on pob it does not recognize this jewel yet so it does not work as intended uh, right now so you might see some of the difference uh, on POB link but that's okay you feel free to pause my video and check my current skill tree right here so this is it hope you guys like it and if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me at a comment down below I'll definitely answer them so if you guys are a science freak like me so this is a place for you I create all the builds right here using ascendance so I kind of like science for some reason not sure why maybe because of the personality so mm -hmm. If you guys like this kind of video, feel free to drop me a like and subscribe if you haven't too, it does have the channel growth. So I'm gonna leave you guys with all the shaper and guardian skills along with Cyrus. Hope you guys are enjoying that and I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs> bye bye.
Ui, ui. <laughs> what the fuck? So far, that's cheating. <laughs> Go away. Chotto matte. Oh no, what the hell? Great. Fuck off, man. Don't hug. No time for hugging. Oh my god, this is not that great. 